No wonder that a temperance society was founded in 1838 to get young people to improve their manners and morals. They also built their own hall in 1872. More moderate behaviour was preached from the pulpit, but with around 5,000 parishioners in the 1830s, Holy Trinity wasn't large enough to accommodate all. Mill owner Christopher Sidgwick became the driving force behind the establishment of another Anglican church in town, Christ Church. This was consecrated on the 25th of September 1839 and has seating for around a thousand worshippers. The opening also marked the split of the parish between Holy Trinity and Christ Church. If you are visiting, look for this gravestone to Edwin Calvert, who died aged 17 and was only three feet high. Christ Church was not the only new church to be built in the 19th century. Many non-conformist chapels were built, including the Baptist Chapel in 1861, Another Wesleyan chapel was built on Water Street in 1864. Trinity Methodist Chapel was established on Westmoreland Street. The Primitive Methodists built this in 1835, later used as a fire station, before moving to a larger chapel on Gargrave Road in 1878 that was later demolished, as was its successor. A Roman Catholic church had never been re-established in the town, even after the Religious Toleration Act. Catholics went to the Tempest's private chapel at Broughton Hall to pray, until St Stephen's was opened in 1842, the building of which was part funded by the Tempest family. In fact, a dispute arose between the family and the diocese that it took six years from the foundation stone being laid until it opened. The churches were also instrumental in establishing new schools to cater for the growing population. Although children had to pay to go to school, free education wasn't available until 1891, over 70 years after the National School on Rectory Lane was built in 1814. This was superseded by the larger parish church school at the end of Otley Street in 1874. What is now Water Street County Primary School started as the Wesleyan Methodist School in 1890. St Stephen's built its own school in 1854, and adjacent to the church stands St Monica's Convent that opened in 1861 and was a girls' school until 1969, although it took in infant boys. Craven Street School is associated with Christchurch, and a non-denominational school, the British School, was established by the Congregationalists in 1856 behind their chapel. It moved to Braum Street and combined with the parish infant school that was at Millfields and is now a cafe. Ings School on Broughton Road dates from a similar period. We mustn't forget this school. Christopher Sidgwick opened this in 1840 for his part-timers, those mill workers aged between 10 and 12 who worked at the high and low mills. But what of the grammar school? It was in a poor state of affairs. In the 18th century there were absentee headmasters, even quarrels over who was actually headmaster, as they could be appointed by the church wardens at Holy Trinity or by Lincoln College, Oxford, and the squabbles led to the school being closed for a number of years. When it eventually did reopen, the headmaster was sacked, but refused to go. In 1869, when it only had about 40 pupils, an inspector found difficulty in examining the scholars, owing to the extreme disorder. Eventually, the role of church wardens came to an end and was replaced by a board of governors, who appointed the headmaster. A new start was made in 1877, when the school moved to Gargrave Road, under the headship of Edward Hartley. To finance this, most of the endowed lands, the lands that were rented out for the upkeep of the school, were sold off. The school was now to be financed by school fees. Although many local people couldn't afford to send their sons to the school, its reputation for pupils gaining places at Oxford and Cambridge led to pupils coming from farther afield and boarding at the school, an arrangement that was to last until 1989. In the 1930s, 1950s and 1970s, the school expanded on the site. A new sports hall was completed in 2004. 
With a reputation as one of the best schools in the country, it has an attendant long waiting list. Close by on Gargrave Road is Skipton Girls High School. The school was established in 1886 using capital from the Pettit Trust. It's grown over the years and one of its crowning achievements is the establishment of an engineering school sponsored by Rolls-Royce. Local people, eager to continue to learn, could do so at the Mechanics Institute that was formed in 1845, although it had to wait until 1887 before it found a permanent home. It continues as a higher educational establishment today, Craven College. The town didn't gain a public library until 1909, when philanthropist Andrew Carnegie funded it. Although the town has had a library since 1719, the year Sylvester Pettit died and his 5,000 volume collection bequeathed to the town. That Pettit Library is still in existence today, with the town council being its current custodian, although most of its books are only of academic interest. Administering the town through the parish wasn't enough for the growing market town. In the 1850s, the government passed legislation so that townships could be run by local boards. Skipton's was established in 1858. A professional police force was established in 1855 and moved here in 1878, with all wrongdoings being dealt with at the county court that was established in 1847. But change was still very much up to entrepreneurs. Even the town hall was privately built in 1862. The council didn't buy it until 1895, when it was sold to them for £4,500. The first gas works was established in 1836, primarily so that gaslight could be used to light the mills and increase productivity. It didn't become a municipal concern until 1899. Self-help was very much a Victorian concept. Two schemes continue to this day. The advantage of buying in bulk and passing the savings on to the shareholders, customers, was the ethos of the cooperative societies. Skipton's Co-op was established in 1861 and had eight branches. Besides the cooperative societies, the need for housing in towns and cities led to the birth of the building society movement, aimed at helping people afford to build their own homes. Skipton Building Society was founded in 1853 by a group of five like-minded local businessmen to, in their words, help an individual to build what he likes, where he likes and as he likes. By the end of the century, the society had opened its first office at Ship Corner. In the 1920s, it grew rapidly, achieving over £1 million of assets by the end of the decade and having a headquarters on the high street. It started to operate further afield after the Second World War, with a branch opening in Harrogate in 1947 and moving into the south when the Guildford branch opened in 1962. In 1978 it built new headquarters off Newmarket Street, one of the few concrete buildings in the town centre. In 1991 the Bailey was built to reflect its stature and the society now has more than £8 billion worth of assets. From its humble beginnings, the society remains mutual, that is, owned by its investors and borrowers. With over a thousand employees, it has a massive effect on the town, not only in terms of employment, but also bringing in much needed spending power to the area. So much was happening in Skipton that in 1857, Robert Tasker, a local bookseller, founded the Craven Herald, a monthly broadsheet that only lasted a few years. In that same year, a rival newspaper, the West Riding Pioneer, was founded. In response to its liberal views, the Conservatives revived the Craven Herald in July 1874, the local paper that still survives today. It incorporated the Pioneer in 1937. Since 1998, it's belonged to US media group Janet and is now printed in Bradford. It's unique in that it's only one of three newspapers in the UK today that still run advertisements on its front page. Skipton people had more say in 1885 when the Skipton Parliamentary Division was formed. Up until then only very few local people could vote and would have had to travel to York to cast it. The first MP elected for Skipton was Sir Matthew Wilson, despite being aged 83. 
It's his statue on the high street that caused such a furore. He was only MP for a year, and he was honoured with this statue during his lifetime. It originally took prime position at the top of the high street. Matthew Wilson was a Liberal, and they built their own hall in 1898, and used the balcony for speeches. In 1895, the elected Urban District Council was formed and took over the affairs of the local board. They became responsible for the workhouse that was built in 1840. This was for those in the Craven area that were unable to keep themselves. Whole families would be split up, men to the wing on the left and women and children to the other side. The dining hall and kitchens were in the middle. Behind it stood the infirmary. This building, closer to Gargrave Road, was for female vagrants, those that were moved on after an overnight stay. In 1948, the site became an NHS hospital for the elderly, before closing in 1991 and transformed into comfortable apartments. To meet the medical needs in Victorian times, the Cottage Hospital was founded in 1898, originally on Granville Street, before moving to Winfield on the Keithley Road in 1932. The hospital is still used today for daycare, although the main hospital for the area is now Airedale General at Steeton. Later in the century there was more leisure time, and again it was through churches that walking, drama and choral societies were formed. Brass bands were also formed, and Skipton Brass Band continues to this day. One of the main events of the year was Whitsuntide, this bank holiday was established in 1871 and each church had its own parade through the town. Another notable event was the annual carnival that was first held in 1899, a tradition that is still maintained every June. The parade, including floats and school processions, winds its way up the high street to Airville Park. if some don't quite make it. Sports clubs were also formed, including Skipton Rugby Club in 1874. They now play on pitches at Sandilands. This match is against Bramley. you be pleased to learn Skipton won. On the adjacent field, Skipton Cricket Club, formed even earlier in 1853, played their matches in the summer months. And here too are pitches for local football teams. The town also has a running club. Here, members take the first places at Hebden's Junior Fell Race. The golf club was founded in 1904. Public swimming baths were opened up on Short Bank Road in 1906. There was an outside as well as an indoor pool. It must have been chilly up here, even on a warm summer's day. The pools were in use until 1963 when Airville Pool opened. <laughs> 